Hey, Vinyl QC, Marker again from Sound Masters, talking all things vinyl as always. Today I'm going to compare two phono stages from Project. The first one is a all solid state based design, it's the Phonobox DS2, and the second one has a tube stage within it, it's called the Tube Box DS2. Both, of course, are part of that DS2 ecosystem that Project have as a hi fi ecosystem, lots of different boxes that you can, lots of different boxes of separates that you can put together. Over on the left here are the two uh, preamps that I have. And um, underneath the two preamps at the top, I've also got my stereo box DS2, which I've had for some time now, which is my integrated amplifier. That has a built-in phono stage that I've been using for some time. Now, I am gonna buy one of these phono stages. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you which one and why. Let's get straight into it. When it comes to the Stereo Box DS2, I've been using that integrated amplifier now for about a couple of years, and it does have a pretty decent built-in phono stage, which you can use to get started straight out of the box. But almost always separate components just do a better job of whatever they're dedicated to do. You know, it stands as a good reason that a box that promises to do all things or be all things to all men just won't quite touch something that is dedicated to one job and one job alone. So it's time to upgrade my Phono preamp. Let's get straight into those two different boxes. We're looking at the Phono Box DS2 first. This is your first step out of a built-in Phono stage within the DS2, now going on DS3 ecosystem. Everything within the DS range comes in either silver or black, as you'll see on the screen here. And you can also add a number of nice solid wood, real, uh, real wood panels in different finishes to um, the sides, depending on the kind of aesthetic that you like. With my Stereo Box DS2, I've gone for the black like this here, and then the dark eucalyptus real wood size, which I think looks rather nice, but your taste may be different to mine. You can adapt that depending on what you prefer. Now, the main features, obviously this is a solid state phono preamp, pretty stripped down, but really versatile in what it can do. It can handle moving magnet and moving coil cartridges. It's a dual mono circuit, so it's you know gonna be great for channel separation. It's gonna be much better, hopefully, for channel separation than any built-in phono stage, which won't have dual mono circuitry in the same way. Um, you can change the input impedance and the capacitance on the front and also adapt the gain on the front panel as well. A lot of phono preamps, you have to do this using really um, fiddly dip switches, which I kind of hate, really. I like the fact that with the phono, uh, with these project phono preamps, you can do this on the fly just from that front panel. Also of note on the front panel is the subsonic filter, which you can just enable with the simple press of a button, which will filter out any unwanted frequencies below 20 hertz. Next up is the Tube Box DS2, which is a significant step up in price, but does have some additional features which are really handy, and also of course has that tube element to the signal. Now, my understanding is that the DS2 is the 12AX7 tubes that are in it are in the output stage, and they're more of a buffer type tube. So they're not in a gain stage or anything like that. They're just adding a little bit of tube character to the output signal. But other than the fact that there's some tube element to the circuitry, what else do you get functionality wise by stepping up to the tube box DS2? What stands out glaringly straight away is this variable um, impedance dial here on the front panel. So when you're setting for moving magnet cartridges or high output moving coil cartridges, you're basically going to be going straight to that fixed 47k uh, impedance point and then you're going to adjust, adjust your capacitance over here based on your user manual, what it says in the user manual, what's optimal for your cartridge, but also to a degree an element of personal taste and experimentation can be applied there. And actually, you know, Project really say that you can't break anything by experimenting with these settings, so what sounds best to you is the best setting for you. But when it comes to moving coil cartridges, of course, you're going to be switching over to that variable dial and this just en enables you a little bit more control than the Phonobox DS2 does in terms of really dialing in that impedance setting to sound best for your setup and your cartridge and to a degree personal taste. On both preamps when it comes to the gain settings essentially you're looking at 40, 45 and 50 for those moving magnet and high output moving coil cartridges so depending on what's optimal for your particular model and then for low output moving coil cartridges you're looking at that kind of 60 to 65 db range. Again there's an element of personal taste and experiment experimentation but you should go to your user manual as a starting point for those optimal settings according to the manufacturer. The other feature you get is two different inputs and two different outputs. So unlike the Phonobox DS2, which just has a single input and output, you can connect 
two different turntables to this preamp if you so desire. So let's say you had one deck set up just to play mono records, which had a true mono cartridge on it, and then another deck set up specifically for stereo, or perhaps maybe you had one that had a moving magnet cartridge on it, and another one that had a moving coil cartridge on there. You could seamlessly switch between the two decks and dial in the settings for the impedance, capacitance, and gain accordingly for each deck. Makes that really seamless. You can kind of on the fly switch between those two systems. If you're lucky enough and so desire to um, kind of take it that far. But also the second output I found is really handy if you want to archive your records, if you want to use a second output to essentially send a signal out to a USB audio interface, for example, it just makes doing so that little bit easier. You can have that permanently set up and just use the button to switch between the two outputs rather than having to unplug your output going out to your integrated amplifier or speakers. You can just switch between those two outputs and you're ready to go. Details and features aside, how do they sound? What's the difference between these preamps in terms of sound quality and which one am I going to buy? Well, compared to the built-in phone stage of my Stereobox DS2, both preamps undoubtedly improved stereo separation, soundstage, and clarity. There's a transparent quality to the Phonobox DS2 and a general lift in energy and dynamics that are often lacking in an internal integrated design. With the TubeBox DS2, typical tube warmth in inverted commas doesn't really cut it to describe how this phono preamp sounds, and I always find that that term is quite generic anyway. To my ears, the tube circuit adds extra dynamics in the low mid-range particularly. This made, to my ears, the TubeBox DS2 a more engaging listen overall. This phono preamp has a rich organic sound that will appeal to vinyl fans who enjoy a little bit of colour in their audio signal. Undoubtedly, there's a significant increase overall in performance compared with any built-in phono stage I've heard. I'll be choosing the TubeBox DS2 as I found it to be the more musical sounding of the two models. That said, if you prefer a more transparent sound, you may actually prefer the PhonoBox DS2. And also when you consider the price difference, you know, $399 in US dollars for the PhonoBox DS2 versus $999 for the TubeBox DS2, you know, this is the US again, the PhonoBox actually starts to look like a huge, huge bargain. In the UK, at the moment, the PhonoBox DS2 is actually currently on sale for as low as £249, possibly with a move towards the DS3 model coming on the horizon, although I can't say this for sure. Either way, if I was looking for a bargain upgrade from an integrated phono stage, I'd snap one up today. So thank you ever so much for watching. That concludes today's video. If you're in the market for either of these products, I do hope you found this useful, or perhaps you're just considering whether or not you want to go down the tube phono preamp uh, route or not. Let us know down in the comments below if you've got any further questions or any kind of you know comments you want to make. Are you a fan of tube phono stages are you more of a solid state or solid state kind of person let me know your thoughts about this topic down in the comments below as always and if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing we'd love to have you on board but until that next video keep spinning